Hey, what's up, peeps and fellow geeks? The Average End User here, and today, as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff on the table, a uh, bunch of work that's got to be done, so uh, let's get to it. Okay, so my idea for the evening was just to kind of do this, and as I'm doing it, post uh, you know periodic videos of the progress. That way I might actually finish it tonight. So here's what the uh, PC currently looks like. Uh, no rear exhaust. Uh, it's nice that the uh, GPU has a back plate. And white LED fans, that's all they are. So the plan is to put these almond fans in there. I was waiting on this controller from Corsair, uh, no, Cooler Master. Um, now the original hard drive for this was supposed to be this. But I ended up switching it out. Uh, this drive here is a uh, 128 gig or 120 gig, yeah, 128 uh, solid state drive. I swapped it out for this Western Blue NVMe drive, which is literally five times as fast. And I bumped the uh, game storage up to a two terabyte hard drive. I'm also going to be giving this Bluetooth capability so it can be used with a PlayStation controller. Uh, one of the last things that's going to be done is adding these cable extensions. Uh, I mean, these are pretty nice. They're all black, uh, but these will make them look just a little bit better. So the processor is uh, Ryzen 5 uh, 1600 AF, uh, 450-watt, 80-plus bronze power supply, uh, motherboard, Asus Prime B450+. Plus. And the memory, set of Corsair DDR4. 3200 megahertz, uh, 2 by 8 gig sticks for a total of 16. Uh, the side panel for the case, holy crap, I'm out of breath. You can see my uh, spaghetti, well, the front side of my case behind there. I haven't taken the plastic off of that yet. Uh, and this was actually supposed to be the original storage plan, but this clone of a Western digital drive died within, I think, two weeks of installing it. And uh, yeah, that didn't work out well. But, here we go. Okay, I am back after some technical difficulties. So the first aesthetic change that I'm going to make is I'm going to switch out uh, these cables, uh, the ones that comes with the power supply. Uh, like I said, these are, you know, black, so it's much better than the old ketchup and mustard. But, aesthetically, uh, these new cables will look much better. So the ones that are going to be changed out are the 8-pin CPU, or EPS, uh, 24 pin power and the 8 pin power for the GPU. I will be back shortly. Okay, so the cables I will be using to replace the stock cables is this kit from Asia Horse. Uh, it's actually the same company uh, that I used for the cables that are in my personal rig. These are cable cones and they are just like what they sound. You use these to uh, sort the cables and make them look nice and neat. So what you do is, uh, before you install, you identify the cables that you need. Uh, in my case, I need one of these. This is for uh, the graphics card. This one is for the 8-pin CPU. and the 24 pin power. Uh, I will be back once the uh, combs are installed and I have them in the case. Okay, I am back and the cable extensions are installed. Uh, personally, I just think it's a much cleaner and neater look. Uh, now we're going to move on to the RGB fans. Okay, so here we go. I wanted to show you guys, it's a uh, a little hard to see because the phone just turned its own light on, but around the motherboard there are like orange accents along trace lines. Uh, and if you notice, there's orange on the power supply. And really weird, but it even turns out there's some orange on the graphics card as well. Uh, so which makes that blue drive stick out horribly. So I'm going to see if I can't fashion some sort of an orange heatsink for it. Now what I'm getting ready to do is get rid of these fans. Uh, this is what they look like off. And here they are powered on. Uh, again, there is no rear exhaust, so I'm going to be 
installing these three Zalman RGB fans. Uh, I've never actually used them before, uh, but they were about 30 bucks a piece. <laughs> so the uh, RGB should be very good. At least it better be, or my review will reflect that. Uh, I'm also going to be installing Uh, this fan controller, it's a uh, PWM as it says and ARGB controller, it just makes everything easier. You connect the fans to this unit and then it's two lines to the motherboard. Uh, I shall return. Alright, the Zalman fans are installed. Here we have one in the rear exhaust, uh, four rear exhaust and the two front intake fans. Uh, now we've got a bit of an issue. Uh, this Cooler Master hub that I bought, if the camera would focus, where you plug things in, uh, you got a section for the PWA and uh, a port for PWA or PWM for the fan and the ARGB. Uh, the issue is the plug for the fans are just a hair too big. Uh, I'm going to see if I can't remedy that and just kind of make it work. Okay, I don't know how well this is going to pick up on camera, but I'm going to try and show you just how tight the tolerance is. I mean, it's about a millimeter. So this is my solution, or my attempt at a solution. Here we have some sandpaper. I am literally just going to try and shave the millimeter off both sides that I need so it'll fit. Okay, my little trick worked. Everything is connected. Uh, let's fire it up. Okay, here we are. Uh, fans are installed and hopefully wired up correctly. Uh, let's hit the power switch and see what happens. Oh, hey, look at that. We have RGB. All right, I'm going to get everything put back together, and I'll uh, see you guys in a minute. Okay, let's power it on. Uh, you can see them through the front. Back, I'll get the side panel on. Give me a second. All right, the last thing to do with this is the peel. Now, unfortunately, this is plexi and not tempered glass so it does scratch pretty easy there we go she's finished what's up peeps and fellow geeks well here we are the end product decided to go with a dual monitor setup well you know just because uh, but there's the PC um, the keyboard, mouse, mouse pad, and headset is all from uh, the Dollar General in a single kit. Uh, the monitors are a uh, couple of uh, used monitors that I picked up over the years. Uh, they're old, but as you can see, they still function. And then a quick rundown of the PC. It's uh, 1600 AF processor, 6 cores, 12 threads. Uh, GTX 960 uh, graphics card from EVGA. Got some Corsair RAM, two 8 gigabyte sticks uh, for a total of 16 gigabytes, uh, 500 gigabyte NVMe uh, solid state boot drive, along with a two terabyte mechanical hard drive for storage. So that's two and a half terabytes of total storage for the system. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, the power supply, EVGA, uh, 450 watt, 80 plus bronze unit. Uh, and the motherboard, I want to say is uh, ASUS B450 Prime Plus. I uh, don't think I forgot anything, but if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask down in the comments and I will do my best to answer. 
Okay, so here you can see I have uh, Warzone loaded up. Up in the upper left hand corner of the monitor you can see the game metrics, uh, the GPU's temperature and its uh, utilization via percentage, uh, how many uh, how much uh, memory the GPU is using. Uh, this is the two green uh, sets of letters, GPU and memory, they are together. Uh, the CPU metrics, uh, its temperature and how much it's being utilized. Uh, system memory and how many frames per second we're getting while we're going. Uh, so I'm just going to load into a singles match here. Now even though we're only in a menu, if you notice the GPU utilization, it's hovering around 100% where the processor seems like it's barely doing anything. Uh, that's because the processor is way more powerful than a GPU of this caliber can keep up with. Uh, unfortunately, with the GPU market as it was at the time I purchased this card, um, it's actually starting to get better. Uh, ideally, I would like to upgrade the 1660 Super in my machine and swap out this uh, 960 for that 1660 Super. It's a much better pair and uh, there would be virtually no bottleneck whatsoever. Okay, we're finally getting ready to load into a game. I will let it go in real time so you can see how it looks. I apologize for the squeaks and creaks. That is the chair I am sitting in. It is very old. <laughs> so here we are dropping in. Uh, pretty bad dip, but it's still smooth for as low as it and quickly as it dipped. Now, granted, the textures and everything don't look great. Um, well, they shouldn't even look this bad. I don't think it's finished loading in yet, but... I need to change my settings. There we go. Alright, here we go, dropping in. And started out at 80 and then went to 70 now we're down to about 45 40 but believe it or not it's a very smooth 40 it's odd to say but Notice the amount of system memory being used, 13 and a half uh, gigabytes of RAM. Uh, I have a 16 gig kit or in this machine. All right, let's just drop. Uh, let's do a quick graphical settings check, see where we're at. I should probably deploy my parachute so I don't die. Okay, graphics. Uh, looks like a mix of low and medium. Maybe all low, not sure. Yeah, pretty much low.
Let's see if I can find someone real quick. Oh, hello, it's down here. Oh, person apparently. Hey, look at that, got a kill. All right. So you can see inside here, the frame rate has shot up quite a bit into the low to high 70s. So outside where there's a much you know, greater amount of graphics to be drawn, it slacks off, but it still is very playable. All right, let's move on to Fortnite. All right, I have uh, Fortnite loading up. We'll see how she does. Spoiler alert, I actually tried this um, and it worked perfectly fine, as you will soon see. All right, let's get into a game of Fortnite. Uh, let's check the settings. See, um, these should be uh, competitive settings. Everything's set to low uh, with an epic view distance. And that looks to be the case. Okay. Uh, I think the resolution of this monitor is 1600 by 900. Yes. Uh, that also helps to improve the frame rates because it's not. Although I did, when I did my preliminary testing, I did it on uh, 1080p and it was still pulling really good numbers. All right. So let's get into a game of Fortnite. All right, so here we are in the battle bus, uh, 115, 110 frames per second, not too shabby. All right, let's get out of here. A little bit of a drop down into the 80s, back up into the 90s, 100s. This is very acceptable. Fairly smooth. Let's see if we can't get ourselves a weapon and a kill. So here we are just about on the ground and over 150 frames per second. That's, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> there we go, gun. One thing I like they've done to Fortnite. Oh, well, this isn't a particular one, but they have added uh, first person aspects to it, believe it or not. Which greatly improved my game. So pretty consistent 100 frames per second. I still haven't run into anyone yet. That thing's actually terrifying when you're up close. <laughs> Alrighty, I found somebody. Alrighty, there it is. Well, um, actually I was kind of paying attention to the fight, not the screen, but I'm guessing it didn't go much below 100 if it did at all. Uh, so yeah, I'll be back with some conclusions here in a bit. Well, in conclusion, I died by the storm and not a character. Whoops. <laughs>